Hey guys and welcome back to the channel and this is the big video, this is the one I'm scared to make uh, talking about Doctor Who series 12, the possibly the most controversial series in whoever um, so I guess we just gotta get straight into it you know uh, and I wanna just explain this is all my opinion okay I always say on this channel I love how everyone has their own opinions and I love to have discussions in the comments, I love to have arguments, just make them friendly, right, don't be an arse about it, just, you know, you know what I mean? So, with that said, let's get into asking the question, can I still defend the timeless child? What happened to the child? Oh doctor, really, the child is you. You are the timeless child. Can I still defend the timeless children? So it aired months ago now and received major uproar almost instantly from the fan base. People are still calling for series 12 to just be erased from the canon. After series 12 finished, I was strangely happy. Um, because I hated series 11, it was a massive disappointment, and then series 12 wasn't anywhere near what I wanted it to be, I almost stopped watching, around episode 4 I actually remember saying to my mum, if this doesn't get better in the 5th episode I'm going to stop watching, and obviously I got pulled straight back into it with Captain Jack and the Fugitive Doctor and everything, but as a whole I enjoy series 12 in total honesty, it doesn't hold a candle to any of the best series so far in you who it's still in the bottom half of the pile but generally I enjoyed it and thought it was a major major improvement from series 11. Honestly Spyfall 2 Parter, Fugitive of the Jejun, Haunting of Via the Adati were the big highlights for me with Can You Hear Me being solid as well and the final two episodes were not too bad in particular the Timeless Children. Assumption of the Cybermen kind of drags after you've seen it once but yeah, but there was also some awful stuff in series 12. I didn't enjoy Orphan 55. That is the worst episode the show has ever produced that I've seen. Uh, and then Praxius, uh, Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. They're not great. And like I say, Ascension of the Cybermen's not that good. So I waited a few days and I didn't really realize how big of a moment the Timeless Child reveal was. But I kind of let it sink in, as I said. And I saw everyone's anger start to fuel up, in particular from YouTube. Uh, I saw Harbour Homes, Harry's Moving Media, Who Culture, and everyone on Twitter just raging. And I, after letting it sink in, I was a fan. I thought it was a fresh new take, something that can be explored incredibly interestingly, and something to renew the show. And I stood my ground for a good few months, in fact. Uh, and as I've said, it's my opinion. Please, please do not come for me with your pitchforks. Keep, keep those knives in, in your kitchen all right but as i said i stood my ground and um i love the fact the fans are passionate but i didn't really speak up about it uh, if asked i'd stand my ground but uh, you know the fan the toxic fan base is quite scary if i'm honest um yeah so i i stood i stood my ground despite being scared too but I stuck with my opinion nonetheless uh, i got to around october time where something in my mind kind of changed and i did not and my opinion started to shift so I still have quite an unpopular opinion about it, uh, let's start off with talking about some of the stuff I still like. It can still be explored, it opens many interesting opportunities, and can be made to work, and it was a genuinely well done reveal in the episode and throughout the series. But the actual impacts is what, what has made it less enjoyable for me, and more, more of why I'm starting to agree with the people who hate it. And I don't hate it as much as many do, I'm still... I, I'm probably on the fence about it at the moment. So I'm okay with the Doctor being the Timeless Child uh, because we've had many Chosen One characters before. Harry Potter is one in particular. Uh, he is incredibly compelling. And so there's no reason the Doctor can't be as well. So if we found out more about what the Timeless Child was, uh, it could still work. But the thing is, she was fine being a Time Lord, so there wasn't much point in that. And then we saw the Roof Doctor, which was interesting. 
but so she also had a police box so did was every doctor's lifetime basically the same you know it would have been so much more interesting if you had different lifetimes where the doctor was completely different and yeah it just doesn't make any sense so are you telling me every time she runs away from Gallifrey and turns into a police box is that what happens every lifetime and why did he almost die in the time of the doctor it basically destroys that whole episode you know the episode means nothing anymore uh, because, you know, he would have regenerated at the end anyway, I guess. Then why did he uh, grow old? It doesn't, it just completely ruins that Christmas special and the goodbye to Matt Smith, which was great. And why was he limited if he was the origin? Uh, they say in the episode that, like, she was tested on multiple times to figure out the regeneration and she kept going. She wasn't limited as a child, but then at some point she was limited. But then, if she was... Why has she had so many lifetimes? Do they keep renewing it? Like, what? Questions that if satisfyingly answered, this reveal could still work for me, but they have to be answered. That's the thing. And they weren't answered. The problem is the reveal in the show was that it left me with these questions. You know, maybe not at first, but now I see that yes, and I imagine I'm going to be sick by this opinion until series 13 airs, but for this to work for me, these questions have to be answered and it has to be explained. It can't just be shoved under the rug. The soul of the Doctor is that she's just a normal person doing the right thing. I am an idiot with a box and a screwdriver. Just passing through, helping out, learning. She's a role model. You know? And that's part of the reason I think it was great to have the Doctor be a girl, you know. I mean, it doesn't really bother me because I think guys, I think young boys can look up to women as well. I don't see an issue with that. Same with girls looking up to men. But um, the way it was presented by the Master made it sound like that the reason why she is the way she is, the reason why she is this magical, amazing woman who goes around saving people is because she's the timeless child. You know what I find the most infuriating? You always behaved like you were different, like you were, like you were special, and you were. And that is not okay. That does ruin the show for me, because that is not the Doctor. That is some prophecy child kind of thing, and I don't care about that. That is not compelling to me. That is that just ruins everything the Doctor's ever done for me. So, if that is what it was intended, Chibnall, then get out. Saying the reason she does that, it's not okay. I mean, first of all, that's just bad, like, storytelling, you know? It's just a bad reveal. It ruins the character. Secondly, it's a bad message out to the fans. Like, you can't be, you can't be a good person unless you're the chosen one. And then, it removes some of the mystery around Doctor Who. The origin is the one place you don't go. It's Doctor Who. It's Doctor Who. You don't, you don't go to the origin. We knew all we had to know. Just, like, we don't know exactly where she comes from, but we have a more concrete idea now, which ruins the mystery. It's Doctor Who. You can now change the name of the show from Doctor Who to The Timeless Child. Uh, why? The, the, the origin of the Doctor is a no-go zone. At, uh, at any point, never go there. Never, never go there. Now, as I say, I don't hate it. It does open up possibilities um, and interesting things to explore with this Doctor. And whilst I enjoy 13, she hasn't had that Doctor moment that the other incarnations have had. Which is unfortunate because Jodie Whittaker is an incredibly talented actress who deserves much better scripts. Um, but she, like I said, she hasn't had the major moment for me yet. And series 12 were, and the special were good for making me enjoy this iteration much more. But she still hasn't had that moment. And this could lead to that moment. So, what do I think they should do? I really don't know. It was such a controversial move that I am thinking maybe they should just wreck on it. Say the master was lying. And that's, that's the most easy way. And then, like, they have to then explain the Ruth Doctor and everything, but... I think that can be easily just explained. Parallel universe. It's simple. And I don't think anyone would be mad, you know. It, despite me not being a hater of the reveal yet, um, I'm not going to be mad if they do wreck on it, honestly. But like I say, if they address it, address what I've brought up here, 
and address it in a well done way, I will be fine with it probably. So yeah, is my opinion still controversial? Probably. Uh, because this era has done much more things that I hate uh, for the Doctor. Uh, I much prefer this idea uh, than the movie idea uh, with Paul McGann where he's half human. But we'll see what happens. Am I a big fan? No, not anymore. Do I hate it though? No. I'm still not totally against it, but realistically Series 13 will determine my opinion. Which isn't great for Series 12 in itself, because that leaves an uncertain taste in my mouth. Because now, my opinion on Series 12 will all is all laid out on how Series 13 is going to play out. I mean, we've seen photos of Jodie on a beach with the Weeping Angel, so the hype is building up for that series. Uh, many people are going to be upset that the Weeping Angels are coming back. I understand why, um, but I'm excited. Uh, I love them. They're the best villains, uh, in my opinion. Uh, excited to see them back anytime, which is hope is in a good story. Um, but... Yeah, it's like, uh, just, my opinion on The Timeless Child will d entirely depends on where Series 13 goes, you know, and it seriously, it has a big job to do, um, and if Chibnon doesn't tackle it, I, uh, he's not a fit for showrunner, and I hate saying that, you know, uh, he's way more talented than I could ever be, probably, but, you know, and I respect him for being in the position to write scripts for Doctor Who anyway, but just as a fan, I don't think he really knows what he's doing uh, with the show. But anyway guys, that is my fresh take on The Timeless Child. Let me know what you think, even though I can imagine what you think in the comments below. Uh, and like I said at the beginning of the video, we can have a friendly discussion uh, about whether it is genuinely awful. Uh, which, by the way, I do totally understand, but this is just my opinion, and yeah, I'm, I'm just, you know, it makes me nervous for Series 13, because I want it to be good, I want it to be good, but I don't have the faith in Chibnall that I ha had in Muffa or Davies. It's not, it's just not great, really, and it's sad, you know, um, but there's not much, there's not much I can do, you know, if Chibnall hears, maybe he'll do something about it, but maybe you won't and then the show's just going to continue down a bit of a hole which I spoke about in my last video but as I said that's going to do it um, and as I say let me know thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one take care